Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today we're going to make some Christmas ornaments. It's getting to be about that time of year. We're here about a week before Thanksgiving, and my wife's wanting some Christmas ornaments she can sell in her store. So I thought I'd give it a whirl and see what I could come up with. Uh, on this video, I am going to do the computer work. And if you're not interested in watching the computer work, I'll leave a caption down below after I've edited the video and show you what time you can skip forward to to get past all the computer stuff if you're not interested. So with that, guys, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to go in here and open a new file. And this I happen to know I want it to be about 16 by 16. Okay, right down here on thickness, I've done these on quarter inch stock, so we're going to change that to one quarter inch. Material surface for your zero. I always do my zero position in the center. <clears throat> That's something I'm going to do a video on here shortly and go a little deeper into zeroing and about that. And slower, I want to go on three times slower, high resolution. Pine's fine. Okay, so we're going to run up in here to this file right up here at the top. Click on it. It sends us over to our clip art. If it doesn't show up in clip art, change it to it. If that's where you got your stuff stuck, if your stuff saved. And we'll click through here until I find uh, Okay, so here's one of them that I did. This is a Santa head, so we're going to go ahead and open it up. We'll take that and we'll slide him down here in the center. Make him just a little bigger. Let's go back up there to that same. Okay, there's Santa. There's my snowflake. Put that right up there by the center. Make it a little bigger. I just kind of size them accordingly there, just about as big as the other. I may have to resize here in a bit. There's my Christmas tree. I've already been by it a couple of times. I believe it was right up here. And one more time. I know the other one's always down here. I'm a snowman. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now we'll just go around to each one of them, go over to the little tray symbol. I'll show you a couple of things this time around. Okay, so we're gonna we've hit trace, and you see right here number of colors threshold. Watch the Christmas tree as I move this slider. See how it fuzzed it out, made it darker. You can take it and make it really light. This is for something if it has real thin lines, or it's not coming in as good as you want. You can turn up the max threshold. And it will darken it in for you a little bit. Okay, corner fit, noise filter. Noise filter, you can take a lot of stuff in and out of it. If you turn it all the way up, it will be so blurred out. Or if you go to cut it, it'll just make a total mess. So I generally just leave most of that alone. Bitmap fading. Okay, let's preview it. Okay, apply, close. Click on it, looks like it came out good, so I'll delete the picture. Move right on over to the snowflake. We're going to do this on each and every one. I'm going to fly through them here after since I showed you one. Click on it, delete. Click on the little snowman, preview, apply, close, delete. Little Saint Nick. There. Okay. So now one of the first things I do, all these snowflakes around this snowman here, let's zoom in. I'm just rolling the wheel up on my mouse to do that. You can see how they're really not going to cut good. So I'm going to go in here, highlight it, right click, and I'm going to ungroup the objects. Go to ungroup back onto original layers. So we'll ungroup them, click out the side. So now, 
each one of these things is separate, individual, I mean each part. We'll go regroup the snowman later. So I'm just going to go through here. Oops, you don't want to get the snowman. And I'm just going to start deleting all this stuff. All these snowflakes. Another little handy tip. If I drag from down and right, I have to get well, that's not going to be correct. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Let's just move on to this, and I'll show you what I was fixing to explain. This has got so many pieces, it wouldn't really work on this. Okay, what I was about to explain, if you have something that's not grouped, say I can just click on one line, the whole thing lines up. Since this is ungrouped, I'm sorry, since you have something is grouped, you can click on the whole thing lines up. Since this is ungrouped, you see each line I click on is something different. So now then, say I want to get a huge part of it, and I get halfway in there. Well, it just does what's in the middle there whatever I completely encompassed. Like if I got completely got the hat, it'll completely get the hat and what's in the box. If I go from right to left, I don't have to be that precise. The line just has to cross the line and it gets more of it. You see what I'm saying? If if I'm right here and I decide I want to make a box, that's nothing. If I do it right to left, it does the whole lines that I crossed. So it will do each line if you go that direction. So be careful if you're going right to left. You will highlight a whole lot more stuff than you want. Anyway, so now that I have the snowman done here, I'm going to re-highlight it, right-click, and I'm going to go back here to Group Objects. Now that's back to one piece. Okay, so let's run over here and make a circle. I want a 5-inch circle. Okay. Here and it'll make a five inch circle, five inch circle, five inch circle. So hit close. So now I'm going to run over here. I believe I want that to stay five inches. So I'm probably going to adjust my snowman because five inches is pretty good size ornament. So we'll just shrink him down a little bit. A little bit more. I need to leave just a little space above his head. I'll show you why here in just a second. So shrink him down. His head in. I'm just going to do this on each one real quick. Pretty much just centering those, pretty much by ball. I'm dropping them down just a little bit from the top. We're going to cut a hole in this thing to so you can tie a ribbon. Okay, so we're going to go back over to the circle. I'm going to do 0.25, quarter inch, create. I'm going to put that dude in right there. That's a quarter inch hole, so plenty of room to pull a ribbon through. So close. Placement a little different on that. I went right over top. That one actually was pretty centered. That one's pretty centered. This one just root. Okay. So we have quarter, quarter inch. I like the snowman. 
I want Santa. I like my bird just a touch bigger. Eh. No, maybe not. Okay, look here. So now I'm going to go back up here to the left. I decided I don't like making it bigger, so I'm going to hit undo, undo, undo. Now you saw it get smaller. I like my Christmas tree. So okay, that's pretty much all for the setup. Now we're going to jump over to the toolpath side. The toolpath on this one, very simple. We're going to highlight everything. Hit shift, hold down shift, and you're going to click on the outer circles. And a little cutout holes. So we're going to run over to V-Bit. On this one I used a 60 degree quarter inch V-Bit. Went into select. You can see right here I've got 60 degree. That's what I picked. You could use a 90 on this. A 90 degree V-Bit would still do this very same thing. I'm just using that 60. I'm kind of messing with it trying different things right now. So right here it tells you flat depth cut rate is 0.1 inches, one tenth of an inch. That's plenty deep enough in a quarter inch piece. So go down here. See if we can center that back up. I didn't mean to actually move it. Alright, so we're gonna hit calculate. Okay, it's got all that highlighted. Preview select the toolpath. We'll go up here to global fill. Let's just change them all to red. And so that'll kind of show you what they came out to. You can zoom in. You can see they're all cut down into the material. Okay. So now then you want to go back up here to 2D view up in the left, click on it. Now, just click out here in the open, hold down shift, no, I'm take that back, hold down shift and we're going to click on the holes. If you watch the video whenever I cut these out, this was a mistake I did make. I noticed it after I got done and cut it out. I want you to go in here to this and hit pocket toolpath. On this one, we're going to change the depth to 0.25. We do not want to use the larger tool. We just want to use the regular tool. Go down here. Plunger H1.1. That all looks good. Calculate. Okay. So it will go in here and make a solid hole all the way in the top. Right above the each thing. So right there, another little trick right here. If you're sitting here and you want to get this back to where it's nice and flat, go up here to Z, and it just takes you flat to back where your regular view was. Okay, now we'll hit close, back to 2D toolpath. Now we will select our outer circle. We'll go up here to profile toolpath, click on it, cut depth. 0.25 is correct. I'm going to edit and look at it here. Okay, it's going to pass depth of an eighth of an inch per time. And that's in this material, that's probably fine. I usually don't go quite that deep, I usually go about 1.11. In this material, it'll probably be fine. So hit OK. Let's try not to take too big of a, a bite in each pass. Okay, outside right, it just means it's going to go around on the outside. Okay, add tabs. This is a must. If you don't add tabs to hold this in, whenever you cut it out, it'll sit here, and when it gets to the last part that's still attached, your piece will sit here and move around, and you'll tear it up. So when you edit tabs, four should be sufficient. Add tabs, and it puts four tabs around each. 
when I did this initially on the actual video of cutting it out, I used toolpath on the little hole and the outside. Big mistake because it puts four tabs here and four tabs inside here. So I had a little chunk of wood. You'll see me cutting it out. I realized it when I was done and a little too far then. <laughs> I mean, I was about through, so I just went with it. So we're going to calculate. Preview selected. And now you can see your little tabs that you'll go in and cut out with a jigsaw or a coping saw or something small. So from there, that's pretty much done. That's pretty much how I did it. So I would go over here to close. I'd hit V carve, save, save toolpath to, and I save it to toolpath. That's the name of my file. And I would name it something, uh, ornaments. And I'd hit save. I've already got all these saved, so I'm going to cancel that. So the next thing you do is come back over here, unclick the card, click Pocket Tool. That'll put the holes in. Save Toolpath. And again, name it appropriately. And repeat it with Profile. Save Toolpath. I usually call that one every time. I usually call it uh, Ornaments Cutout. I call it Cutout. That way I know that's the one that cuts it out. And that's the last one I do every time. So guys, that pretty much is how I've done this one. I'll show you just a few more things this time. Each time I show one of these, I'll try to show new stuff, more of what I'm looking at. I just don't want to overwhelm anybody with it because there is a ton of stuff to this, and I am by no means an expert. And there are plenty of videos out there with guys way more knowledgeable than me. Uh, this is just the stuff I'm doing, so if you see something I've done and you want to try to do it, this is how I've done this one. So let's move on over to where I'm cutting it out.
guys, that was it. I made those things four inch uh, diameter. They're a pretty big ornament, but I needed to make them a little bit bigger for all the detail. I'll show them to you real quick. I got them laid out here. Came out pretty good and I left such a big hole because my wife was talking about putting a great big uh, ribbon in there and tying bows and so you could tie them to the tree. So that was some little Christmas ornaments for the tree this year. Well guys, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe and I'll see y'all next time.